Hi, so I'm quite sure a lot of people know what this is. It's a synchronous motor. It's a turntable motor actually from a microwave. It turns about four to five RPM. Now it's quite a common thing to take these actually and turn them into little generators. You put a handle on there and crank it. You can actually charge a capacitor, light an LED, that sort of stuff. So they're kind of cool. But I don't know if you've had a look inside them. So what we're gonna do is take it apart and have a quick look inside. OK, it's a pretty simple thing. There's four little tabs around there. If you take those tabs out, you can flip that top cover off and you see a whole bunch of gears. You take those gears out. It's an underneath plate which you can remove. And that is a magnet. And it sits here. In this coil so that's just a straightforward coil of wire round in that direction which is really really interesting when you think about it because what you're actually doing is spinning that magnet in that coil of wire to generate some electricity from it and actually it does a reasonable job now that's a non-traditional arrangement what you kind of expect is the coil to be like that facing onto the magnet that way instead it's looped entirely around the magnet isn't that fascinating and a little bizarre actually it's not at all what you would expect it to be but it did encourage me to try this now I've made a large bobbin that's just a single coil on a bit of blue plastic with a bit of red plastic as an inner and I've wound 500 feet of 38 SWG wire in there reason that's what I had it was just a coil of wire I had and I put the entire coil onto this bobbin because I want to make a big version of that little motor. Because I'm wondering if a big version would actually do the similar thing. Because remember, we're not interested in efficiency, we're interested in sufficiency. That is, what's the sufficient amount of work we need to put into something to get a result that is acceptable to us? Now the problem with these larger ones is all the winding of those coils. If you look at the thing we did on the rotating wind turbine, I had to make something like um, 50 coils. It was quite tedious. If I only have to make one, it'll be quicker, it'll be cheaper. And that's a really important thing. So if this actually does work, then it's a way of getting those things made in an economic way, if the output is sufficient against the cost. So I thought I'd try it. So what I've done is make this big bobbin. And then the bobbin fits into this, which if you remember was an exercise bike. I've chopped the seat off, I've chopped the handlebars off, I've taken out the pulley and um, made this so that it will fit into there. So my job is to fit that, fit the pulley back, and let's see if it'll actually work. Is attached. Now all of the magnets are north facing incidentally, and that coil has a resistance of 900 ohms. That's quite a lot, that's nearly a kilo ohm. But let's give it a spin and see what happens. There we go. Okay, we're getting a voltage reading. It's at 0 0.8 of a volt, 0 0.9, 1, 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 .1, 1 <laughs> so we're definitely generating voltage. What about the amps? It's 1.3 volts. And we're getting about a milliamp out of it. One and a half milliamps. Okay, so that is not blistering, is it? But it might raise the question, why bother? Well, let's face it, that's an unusual coil arrangement. And having all of the magnets north facing is equally pretty unusual. Now that resistance on that coil is really high, so I think that maybe if we made separate coils running in that direction, but with a lower resistance, we ought to get more out of it. And in places, this isn't brilliantly made, this ring, it's actually about a centimetre more, actually nearly a centimetre and a half, away from the magnets, and as we know, it's the square of the distance. So we need to make that um, coil fit more closely around the spinning magnets. 
The fact that we're getting anything, I think, is really pretty interesting stuff. I mean, we kind of thought we might because we're really just modeling what there was in that motor. Um, but I think something like that has potential. And I think that's really super interesting because if we can get that to work, it's obvious that this is much, more, much simpler as a method of construction than 50 separate little coils all put around it. It's just one big coil, really. Uh, like I say, I think we ought to look at unwinding that, rewinding it in shorter lengths so that the resistance is shorter. But pretty interesting, I thought. So I hope you thought so too. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.